Uh, Barry Melrose joins me now on the Sports Bash 97.3 ESPN. Coatsy will join us again tomorrow with more from Washington. Barry, is that accurate? Did you play with Coatsy? Yeah, we played together at uh, Springfield in the American League. I was uh, on loan from Cincinnati to uh, Springfield, which was the Flyers farm team. And uh, Coatsy was, as a matter of fact, he was the captain of the team, as a matter of fact. So, obviously, leadership didn't matter much in those days. <laughs> but uh, oh, without man. a doubt, uh, one of the great guys I played with and one of the funniest guys I played with. And Whenever we get together, we always tell stories about those old days. So he was uh, he's one of my favorite people. Well, he, you know, he joins us every Thursday on the show. We talk uh, about the Flyers with him a lot. And, of course, uh, uh, other things come up along the way. But one of the things he said yesterday was, you know, if Mason can give them an effort like he did in that Ranger series a couple of years ago, that that's their shot. Do you concur that that's maybe the only way the Flyers win this series? Or are there other things that stand out about this series to you? Well, I, the, the great equalizer in, in hockey is a goaltender, and, and uh, we've seen goaltenders win playoff rounds. And really, if you look at the two teams, uh, you know, the year Washington had, the stars they have, the talent they have, uh, you know, they, they should win the East. If they work as hard as the opposition, they should beat you because they got more skill than you do. And uh, the great equalizer is a goaltender. And, and if uh, Mason can outplay Holtby, uh, the Flyers have a chance. Um, you know, same there, you know, Lundquist has to outplay uh, Flurry. Uh, I really think for the Rangers to have a chance. So uh, that has always been the, the difference maker in, in the NHL. And it will be this year. And, and Mason has to be awesome for the Flyers to beat, uh, beat the Washington Capitals. You know, is it a blessing or a curse for you, Barry, that the Flyers needed the final days to clinch a playoff spot? So many times, hot goalies is because of the momentum that they needed to get into the spot. Do you like a team that needs to play to the end of the year to get in or the team that gets, you know, ground like Washington? They were the number one seed for about two weeks now. No, I, I like the team that have to play to get in. I think that uh, bodes well for the Flyers. If you look at the, the history of the President's Trophy winners, I think out of the last seven, only one has won the Stanley Cup. So just because you win the President's Trophy doesn't mean that you're going to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, I, I think it's way more important how you're playing going in uh, than where you finish. And then we see it every year. We've seen L.A. come from a seventh seed. We see other teams come from uh, five, six, seven seeds and, and win the Stanley Cup. So the Flyers are coming in on a hot note. They have to win uh, one of the last two games. They won them both. They've basically been in the playoffs for the last six weeks, uh, knowing that they, that they lost two games in a row or something they're pretty well done so they're they're probably the hottest team coming into the playoffs uh, out of the 16 that are in the playoffs right now why is that in in the nhl barry you know in basketball we just went over the pairings and i don't know that anybody would pick a lower seed in hockey you almost put the teams in a hat and say they all got a shot i mean maybe there's a couple lopsided uh matchups here and there but everything's so evenly matched from one through eight why is that Top uh, parity. Uh, the NHL, uh, the salary cap is working. Um, you know, the 16 teams that are in and then four or five teams that missed the playoffs are very good hockey teams. And uh, on any given night, if a goaltender gets hot or a special team unit gets hot, a power play, uh, you know, you can win a game. And uh, the, the, the thing in, about a seven-game series is the best team always wins. In a best of one, uh, you can't say that, but a best of seven, the best team always wins and and we we have upsets we have them every year and we have major upsets so uh you know the flyers are a huge underdog but it would not surprise me at all uh, if the flyers win uh, you know that's just the nature of our sport and i think that's makes our our sport special and i, I think it's a lot of it's because it's such a team game uh you know one guy doesn't carry uh you know apart from a goaltender one guy isn't going to make that much of a difference it, it takes all four lines it takes six defensemen you know, it takes uh, the, the fourth line right winger to score a winning goal in overtime. You see that happen all the time. Uh, that's what makes our game special, and, and uh, you know, that's why I love it so much. Uh, they got Ovechkin, obviously. He led the league the fourth straight year uh, in goals scored, but this year, maybe unlike years past when they've had some heartbreak in the playoffs, Kuznetsov really has added to them as the second-line center. They've had Backstrom there uh, for a couple of years, but that second line uh, and the depth this team has, is that really the big difference maker for Washington? And the addition of Justin Williams. Uh, they went out and got a winner, a guy that has won Stanley Cups, a guy that's won the Conn Smythe, a guy that makes a, a living out of scoring uh, goals in Game 7 or overtime. Uh, that was a great pickup by the Caps. Uh, they're, they're much better defensively now than they were. Uh, Mike Green was a great offensive defenseman, but he wasn't very good defensively. Uh, he went to Detroit. I, I think the crew now is much uh, 
a better defense where they don't make nearly as many mistakes uh, in their own zone. Uh, because Netsov, as you mentioned, became a star. That took a lot of heat off uh, Ovechkin, Backstrom, and, and company. They got a great power play. Oshie was a good pickup, a right-handed shot, playing in that center position on the power play. Uh, really helped a lot also. So they're a good team. This is the best Washington Capitals team I think there's ever been. How about Holpe? I mean, he wins. You see that 48 wins, and you say, man, uh, is the defense in front of him? Is he the real deal? I mean, uh, I was reading the other day, at even strength, Mason's actually got a better uh, save percentage than Holtby does. Uh, but is this a combination of Holtby that good, or is the Washington defense really that good? I think a combination. Uh, I think any any goaltender that's great, uh, he'll tell you that my defense in front of me are very good. Um, you know, as far as save percentage go, they're, they're probably pretty close. Uh, all the good goaltenders are 9-3, something like that. Um, you know, uh, obviously, uh, Holby challenged Marty Brodeur's record. Anytime you're challenging a Marty Brodeur record, you're, you've had a good year. Uh, now Holby's got to do it in the playoffs. Uh, you know, what you've done in the regular season doesn't matter. We've seen uh, Mark andre Fleury is a great example, a guy that has great regular seasons and hasn't done it in the playoffs for a number of years. So uh, that's why, you know, uh, you got to look at Lundquist. you got to look at Johnson Quick. Uh, you got to look at Crawford. Get in there, guys that have have won big games, guys that have taken their team a long way. You know, those are the, the teams that you think will have a good playoffs because of those guys. Uh, Barry Melrose is with us, ESPN NHL hockey analyst. The Flyers were 6-8-3 and three through 17 games. They were one of the lowest scoring in the NHL. It was dreadful to watch them. They finished the year 25-9-7. and seven. Which team are they closer to? The team that's 25-9-7 uh, and seven or almost a 500 team talent-wise? I think they're. Uh, I think they're the team that finished. I, I think the, the opening part of the season was an aberration. I think when Goss and Spear got here, uh, that changed the game. I, I think the moving of Shen and, and uh, the Cavalier opened up a lot of uh, doors for younger players, faster players, made Philadelphia a quicker team. Um, you know, Drew has been great. I thought Borchuk played better at the end of the year, got going a little bit. Simmons has been fantastic. Uh, you know, 30 goals. They said 31 goals this year. He's just a, a scoring machine, great on the power play. Uh, defensively, they're, they're much quicker now. Um, Flyers always had a big, slow defense, and that's just not made for today's NHL. Now that defense led by Costa Spear is very quick and can make that first pass and can join the rush. They're much tougher to play against than, than they used to be. So uh, I think the Flyers are a good team. I, I You know, I think this is a team that is uh, made for the long haul. Most of their players are young in their prime. Uh, Dave Haxtell has done a great job. Uh, I, I got to think, uh, certainly I would think he's one of the finalists for Coach of the Year. Uh, so I, I think the Flyers are for real. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it's interesting. They have Claude Giroux, Wayne Simmons, Shen, and Voracek. How do those four guys, as really the, the main scorers, match up with the firepower that Washington has in terms of putting the puck in the net? Well, nobody's got a 50-goal scorer. There's only one of those in the NHL. So, <laughs> you know, you don't have that guy. Uh, Flyers got to sell the penalty box. Uh, Washington Capitals got a great power play. Uh, you, you just can't take penalties against them. Uh, you know, obviously, if you just look at uh, the the talent level of the two teams, Washington's a more talented team. Uh, I don't think the Philadelphia Flyers will will deny that. But uh, you know, will beat skill a lot of times. And if the Flyers uh, outwork the Washington Capitals, or should I say, if the Washington Capitals uh, let the Flyers outwork them, then uh, the Flyers have a chance of winning this series. Yeah, and, uh, you know, you mentioned uh, to stay out of the box. You know, that's a big thing for all of these teams in the playoffs. But, you know, the concern for the Flyers on defense, if they can control this firepower that uh, the Capitals bring to the table, I thought, Barry, when these two teams played a couple of weeks ago, that the Flyers went toe-to-toe with them. The first couple of times they played, even though they beat them once, they just didn't look like they belong. Like they, they looked like two different level teams. I thought Philadelphia, that's that last time they played them, really – was able to limit Washington's uh, puck in the neut- in the in the offensive zone, and that's something they weren't able to do. And that really showed me that the Flyers have grown a lot from where they were early in the year. Oh, they've come a million miles. Are, are you kidding? Are they, you know, they've added players, they've added speed, they've added character. Uh, the goaltending has solidified. Uh, the defense has been very good. They're they're a completely different team than they were at the start of the season. If they if they wouldn't have changed, they wouldn't have made the playoffs. You know we. We've seen that with the Ducks. The Ducks started seven, one, seven, and two, and then uh, you know basically the last two thirds of the season they are arguably the best team in the NHL. So it's not how you start a season; it's how you finish it. And the Flyers are a good example of that. We know Barry, uh, the Flyers will be playing with heavy hearts not only in Philadelphia in NHL circles. The passing of Ed Snyder, uh, and you know just 
putting that extra motivation in here, not only a hot team, the eight seed, uh, it obviously adds to the Flyers' story and makes them a little bit more of a dangerous team. One, how does that factor in, if at all? And number two, do you have any dealings with Mr. Snyder that you could share? Well, the dealings I have with Mr. Snyder is that, you know, you just hated playing the Flyers. Uh, I, I hated playing them when I played. Um, yeah, you hated playing them uh, when they, when I coached. Actually, I got a funny story. When I coached uh, Los Angeles, we came in and, uh, we were playing the Flyers in the Spectrum, and uh, there was a terrible storm that day. And uh, it was after the first period, and uh, Al Conroy, uh, uh, who was a member of the Flyers, uh, scored his first goal of, of the year uh, in that game. But after the first period, the windows blew out in the Spectrum. And uh, <laughs> because of safety, they canceled the game. So poor Al Conroy scored his first goal of the year uh, against us, and uh, the goal didn't count because the game was... Uh, uh, you know, postponed, and, and we played the whole thing over again. Uh, and so I always laugh at that. But uh, the Flyers were, you know, the, you knew the Flyers were going to uh, go after free agents. The owner spent money. The owner was uh, a guy that, that tried everything uh, to make his team win. He gave the coach and general manager everything they needed in order to win. And then he's owned the team 49 years. Like, you know, what owners own a team 49 years? Uh, so, uh, you know, I, I think everybody in the hockey world realized what a great owner Mr. Snyder was. Yeah, and uh, let's take a look real quick, Barry, at uh, the other series, which I think uh, in the East anyway, which is very intriguing, is the Pittsburgh Rangers series, uh, where at the end there, Pittsburgh had played even uh, better hockey than the Flyers did. And, of course, the Flyers beat the Penguins to get into this spot, which was kind of a surprise by many. But Pittsburgh, probably the hottest team down the stretch here, surpassing the Rangers and now very apropos that they'll meet here. Was that flip-flop of, this, of the standings enough to lean Pittsburgh's way? No, I, I, I think the Rangers are going to win for one reason, Henry Lundqvist. You just were talking about goaltending. Uh, Lundqvist is one of the best goaltenders in the world, uh, certainly top three. And, uh, you know, this is why you have them. Uh, the Rangers are beat up a little bit. McDonough's not going to play. Pittsburgh uh, has, has played very well down the stretch, as you mentioned. Fleury, not, I don't know if he's going to play. He, he's not 100%. If he does, he had the concussion uh, with a couple games left. He has not had a, a great history of playoffs recently. Um, so I, that's why I think the, the Rangers will win. It'll come down to Lundqvist out playing Fleury. And, and uh, the New York Rangers uh, have been a very good playoff team the last three or four years, and, and the Pittsburgh Penguins have not. And uh, the Rangers have knocked the Penguins out uh, two years in a row here and uh, looking to make it to the Eastern Conference Final for a third straight year. The Rangers and the Penguins, that series starts tonight. You also have the Panthers and the Islanders, and they seem like, you know, a little bit lower profile, but the Panthers probably like that. I think people don't understand how good this Panthers team really was this year. I think the Florida Panthers is one of the great stories in the NHL uh, with Yarder continuing to play and playing well. Uh, Luongo and Nett playing very, very well. Um, all the young players, they have Barkoff and Hubido and Ekblad and, and Bukestad and uh, some of the other older veterans that have rekindled their careers in Florida. I, I think Florida's a great story. I really, you know, uh, I think they're going to win the, the, the series. I, I think they're a, a very deep team. they got a lot of skill. Uh, so I think that the, the Florida Panthers, which, which they need as a franchise very badly, they need to get some excitement in southern Florida. Uh, people are starting to believe in them. Uh, you know, they could go, you know, around or – or even two in the playoffs, that would do great for season tickets and really get people uh, charged about that team again. Yeah, Yager, uh, did he play with Coatsy and you? No, no. Uh, <laughs> well, Yager, Coatsy would never play with Yager. Coatsy was on the fourth line. Yager was always on the first line. Forty-four Coatsy years never old. Got to play with big boys. Uh, Sixty-six points for Yager. Forty-four years old. And then Tampa, too. I mean, Detroit, 25 straight years in the playoffs, just as solid as a rock. And the Lightning, again, a team that's been great, uh, but very under the radar. It seems like the two Florida teams always under the radar. I think Tampa's beat up just too much. Uh, Stamkos is out. Strowman's not playing. Hedman's going to play, but he's not 100%. Johnson's going to play, but he's not 100%. Those are four important players uh, for Tampa Bay. Um, you know, Detroit realizes they're lucky to get in. They backed in. They lost their last game, but they still got into the playoffs. They got some older players that realize that their window is closing. Uh, that's who might be leaving probably is at the end of this year. I think the players would like to send them off with a real good playoff run. They got some great young players that can fly. Uh, so I, I think Detroit's going to beat Tampa. I think it'll be a heck of a series, but I think Detroit will beat Tampa. So you like Detroit. You like uh, Florida. Uh, New York, and then we come back to the beginning here, Philadelphia and Washington. Uh, it seems that everybody is going Washington's way. Do you join them? 
Yeah, I do. I I, I just think if, if Washington plays as hard as Flyers, they should win. They just got more skill. Um, you know, obviously, uh, if Flyers win, it'll be one of the best uh, upsets we've had in a long, long time. A, a team that makes the playoffs the last game of the year against the President's Trophy winner. But, uh, like I said, President's Trophy winners usually don't get to the Stanley Cup Finals. But I do like this Washington team. I think it's very solid. I think Barry Trotz has done a good job. Um, I, I don't think they'll get outworked. I, I think their their work ethic is pretty good. Uh, so I, I don't, and I think they'll respect the Philadelphia Flyers. I think Barry Trotz uh, will make sure that his team knows that that team across the uh, the runway there is a very good team, a team that's played very well, and a team with a lot of character. It's been a good story for the Flyers either way. They will continue that story Thursday night right here on 97.3. The Flyers and the Capitals, Barry Melrose and the guys over at ESPN will have plenty starting tonight on the NHL playoffs, uh, which start beginning this evening. Barry, always a pleasure. We hope to talk to you soon. Say hello to Coachy for me next time you talk to him.